started. What's going on, Boston? Boston. Boston. I've been practicing how to say that properly. I don't think I got it yet. Uh, my name is Brad Williams. I'm going to be talking about WordPress security. Everybody hear me all right? Good. Um, you notice my nice WordPress slash chassis built logo here kind of represents what we're going to get into uh, without the porn helmet. Um, before we get started, we have any football fans in the room? Yeah, yeah. And you can probably guess what my team is, so go Colts. <laughs> uh, I had a feeling I might get that in Boston. I'm actually staying in town more to watch the game, so uh, that should be an interesting experience. <laughs> uh, yeah, so a little bit of fun. Uh, I'm going to be giving them a giveaway. So, if you keep track of all the different Colts horseshoes throughout my presentation, uh, I'm going to give you the opportunity to submit your guests, and I'll be giving away a copy of my good friend Patrick O'Keefe's Managing Online Forms uh, to whoever gets it right or gets it closest by end of lunch. So keep track of the horseshoes, and I'll tell you how to submit that at 4 p.m. Who am I? Uh, again, Brad Williams, webdevstudios.com. Uh, I've also got a uh, co author of professional WordPress book coming out in March, so keep an eye out for that. Uh, so let's jump right into it. The goal of this presentation is to scare the crap out of you. <laughs> and by doing so, we'll make everything better with uh, some of the best security tips the any little cat. Uh, we're going to cover. Uh, start counting. So we're going to cover. Uh, example of a hack site so you kind of can understand what we're up against and then we'll talk about some good security tips uh, and some recommended plugins. So let's jump right into the scary. Uh, link injection. So basically there's hacker bots out there and again this is just one example of a way your site can be hacked in many different ways. Um, there's bots out there that are looking for exploits whether it be SQL injection, you know, incorrect permissions set on your server, um, all sorts of things. Uh, one of the uh, downsides of open source is that everybody has a copy of code. So if there is a vulnerability, they're going to know about it and they can figure out how to exploit it. Um, so this basically allows them to uh, you know, insert spam files or links into your sites, um, in your plugins, and the poor files, and like to hide. The old kind of school thought with hacker bots back in the old days was just to wreak havoc and take down the sites, just like viruses. Um, they've gotten smarter. They know if they take down a website, there's no value to that. So now they're basically trying to inject spam links. Um, you know, to make money off of this stuff. So that's what you really got to watch out for. So if you're, you, your site could be completely hacked, and you would have no idea. Um, and I'll show you a little bit more. Um, so this example, basically it was a hosting account. It had two separate installations of WordPress. One was in you, and uh, one was standard WordPress. Um, the hacker bot dropped a, uh, the, the, basically the mothership file on WordPress in you. Um, we actually didn't know about it when it first happened. Um, the way we found out, um, was the other installation of WordPress was got hacked and actually ended up with a bunch of spam links in the footer. Um, we found out that Google basically dropped the entire site out of their search engine um, overnight and just disappeared. And that's when we were first alerted that there was a problem. Um, so we started investigating the regular WordPress site and found the hacked files, the spam links, uh, all that stuff. And we cleaned it up, got rid of all the hacked files, everything was great. A couple days later, it all came back and we couldn't figure out why. Um, so after a couple times doing this, uh, we started looking around the rest of the uh, installations on the hosting environment and found out that there was actually, like I said, a mothership file sitting on WordPress MU that was basically sitting there dormant. Um, it was not hacking itself. It was looking for other installations to hack, knowing that if it hacks itself, we'd be able to find it quicker. So it was actually pretty smart. Um, once we found the mothership file in MU, cleared it off, and they cleaned all the sites and never came back. Um, so it kind of shows you there's, you know, these, these aren't just little script keys. These are very smart um, programs out there. So they're, they're going to do everything they can to not be detected. Yeah. Can you tell me how the file got on the WordPress and you installed? Uh, in this particular instance, it was a misconfigured server. Um, it was, we, we, we didn't really pinpoint exactly how it came in, but uh, we came down that the server was, was basically there's certain directories that were when it should be. Um, yeah, so basically this is uh, what resulted from the hack. All these uh, spam links were dropped into the footer of the website, um, which you wouldn't even know was there because of this little line of code, which is basically uh, just simple CSS that hides any of the text in between there. So, looking at the website, you couldn't tell it's hacked, but if you viewed source, you saw all of this. And there was, you know, 
well, 375 spam links on basically every page of the website. As soon as Google picked up on this, that's when they kicked us out of their search engine. Um, and they actually alerted us through Google Webmaster Tools. So if you're not a part of Google Webmaster Tools, definitely sign up. Um, submit your site. If, if there's ever a problem, if you ever get kicked off of Google and you're not sure why, most of the times we're going to send you a message through Webmaster Tools and tell you why. And it's, it's usually because your site's been hacked. Uh, the aftermath, it was, like I said, dropped from Google. The page rank, when it actually came back to Google, the page rank dropped from a 6 to a 5. Um, that's a big hit. It's hard to get a 6 um, on the blog. So um, It also hacked PHPBB, so it wasn't just looking for WordPress. It was looking for other popular um, open source applications on the environment. Um, and of course, you know, organic traffic starts showing up for bad words. Um, and finally, got the PR back after months of uh, after the hack, but uh, it took a while, so it was, it was pretty nasty. So you scared yet? Poor little Teddy. Uh, so let's jump right into securing WordPress. All right, so how many people, when you log into WordPress, use the username admin? You should not do that. <laughs> That's right. Have an account, you do not want on your website. If you have it, there's multiple ways you can get rid of it. Um, if you're familiar with uh, or comfortable with MySQL and working with the database, you can run this simple query. Um, you know, WordPress says you shouldn't really do this, but it's not going to hurt anything. Um, now, if you're not familiar with it, you can do it through the WordPress uh, UI. You can simply log in as admin, create a new admin account, log out from your admin account, log in with the new account you created, and at that point, you'll be allowed to delete the original admin. Yes. Um. When you do that, one reason why I've resisted doing that, even though I know I really should, is that I've got lots of posts that are attributed to the admin account, and mm -hmm. I want someone to find all of my posts, and then there'll be two users with two different sets of posts. So um, what have to edit the database? Well, how would I, how would when I, you I, actually delete the user account, WordPress now pop up and ask you what you want to do with those posts that are really? associated with that account. That's and at that point, you can, I believe, um, and correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe you can assign them to another user, or you can delete them all together. So it will give you that option. Um, again, so if you use an admin, you know, go home tonight or tomorrow uh, and get rid of it. But definitely make sure you have another admin account ready to go. Uh, the great permission debate, that's a lot of questions people have. What permissions should I set my files and folders? Um, yeah. Just back on the last one. In, sure. in his instance where he's got all these posts to admin and changes the user account to whatever the new name is, isn't that a bit giveaway for having it being hacked now that the new admin name is revealed? Well, you, that's good because, well, basically in a theme, you should really just put by the username. You should put by the display name and have like a friendly name, like by John Smith or whatever, rather than by admin. So, and that's, you know, set up in your theme template file. So if your theme actually displays your username, you switch it um, to display uh, your display name. Actually, most things should be hooked in. So if you just go into your edit your user, and you know, select display as um, friendly name or whatever, and that would be right. So basically, I know that's a good point. Um, so the permissions. Uh, the thing about permissions, there's no one answer to this because it really is based off your server configuration. Um, but as a general rule of thumb, these are what your default should be. So all files should be 644, uh, and all folders should be 755. And I'll show you what it means on the next slide and how to set these if you're not familiar with them. Um, now, Obviously, on most hosting accounts, uh, the default permissions will not allow you to upload images. Um, so to do that, you have to set um, your uploads folder, you have to open it up a little bit more so you can up actually upload images through your post. Uh, what I always tell people, start with 755 on your uploads folder. If that doesn't work, and you try to upload an image and it won't let you, uh, go to 775, which is kind of the next step up. And if it still doesn't work, go to 777. Now, some hosting accounts require 777 to upload files, like Bluehost and a lot of the shared hosting. Um, so it doesn't mean you're opening up this folder to the world. Uh, it's basically just based on how their server configuration is set up and what's allowed for the anonymous user to uh, you know, upload images. Uh, but again, just kind of go up and figure out where that exact permission is that you need to upload, full, uh, upload permissions. Um, to set these, um, almost every FTP client um, log into your website and you right click on a folder, it's going to give you something along the lines of file permission, folder permission, something like that. Um, in this instance, I'm using FileZilla, which is an open source FTP program. Uh, if you right, you know, so you right click on any folder or any file, go to file permissions, it's going to pop up with a dialog similar. Um, you can see there's a numeric value set of permissions. Um, you can also just check them and it will change that value based on what you're checking. Um, so you can see in this instance it's set to 755. Um, if you're familiar with shell access, you can just run these commands. 
um, to set it. Uh, and also, if you notice some of your numeric value instead of the person subdirectories, if you're unsure what all your provisions are throughout your whole directory, go to your root level where WordPress is installed, um, set the file permission to 755 and make it a person the subdirectories, and it'll basically reset everything back to 755. Um, it'll go through all your folders and make sure everything's locked down. Um, you, you know, you want to make sure it's at 755 and only, only increase it if it needs to, like uploads folder or galleries folder if you're using next gen. Uh, since 2.6, you can actually move your WP config file. Um, this is a nice technique. It's basically when WordPress loads, uh, the first place it looks for your config file is in your root directory of WordPress. That makes sense. Uh, if you can't find it there, it actually goes outside of that directory. Uh, so basically, up one level and looks for it there. Um, if it still can't find it, then it throws an error message saying can't find a config file, can't connect the database. Um, there's nothing you have to change for this to work. So if you basically pull out your config file, put it up one directory like the example, uh, WordPress will load just fine. So you can do this on a production website um, and not have to worry about it. It's not something you really need to test in the web environment. Unless you feel like you want to. Um, it certainly doesn't hurt. But it makes it really uh, pretty much nearly impossible to get to it from the domain level because now it's outside of the domain group. So um, if there was something um, configured incorrectly on the server that would allow you to maybe view source on that file, so if I went to whatever.pound slash so you can fake out PHP and all of a sudden all the source code popped up with my database information. Um, if that file doesn't exist, it's not going to show up, obviously. So it just adds kind of an extra layer um, of security. Is there a question? Yeah. Does it have to be inside a public folder or can you take it up above? It's just up one directly. This is just an example. Okay. Um, so, so WordPress was in the public HTML, I could pull it out. You pull it out one directory outside of that. So this is just an example of this kind of mm -hmm. simple setup, but yeah, it's just up one. Yeah. What if you have more than one installation set up? That's something you got to think about, because obviously you can't have multiple config files in the same folder. Um, in that instance, you would almost have to you know, push your WordPress files down one directory just for this to work. So you kind of have to gauge whether that's going to make sense in your case or not. Uh, but you know, going forward, you can certainly keep that in mind for any new sites you're setting up. Yeah, in fact. For the config file? Yeah. Well, you can't, it, there's only two places it can exist. Either in the root directory of WordPress or up one level. You can't push it down one level. There's no way to explicitly say this is where my config file exists. It's just, it's literally just an if statement. If it's here, use it. If not, look here. If it's not there, throw an error message. So at this point in WordPress, there's no way to, to push it anywhere else. Um, you know, future version might be a, a, like a global constant you can set to change that, but as of right now, you can't do that. Um, also, since 2.6, you can move the, the WP content directory. Now, this one I always kind of put a little disclaimer. This one's a little touch and go because you can certainly move it wherever you want. You just have to define um, in your config file where you're putting it. The problem with this is if, if the plugins and themes you're using aren't referencing um, these uh, um, constants, the WP content there and WP content URL correctly, they're going to break. Um, so, obviously, plugin authors should be using this. Theme authors should be using this, but they don't all use it. Um, this is one, if you're interested in doing, definitely test on a dev environment. Um, because if you do it and the plugins aren't supported or aren't coded correctly, they're going to break. Um, so, you know, try it out. You can certainly move it. Um, you can define it. It's not just, it, it doesn't have to go up one level or down one level. It can be down 10 different directories if you want. Yes? This is the WP content directory. Right. So, so Right, now for the wp-config.php file, you move it and it happens. You don't have to set anything, there's nothing else you have to do. If you move the wp content directory, you have to define where it's at in your config file. So it doesn't, it's, it's not going to just find it for you, you basically have to set it and say, I, I, I move this folder to this directory. Does that make sense? Okay, sure. Um, but again, test, 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 because uh, a lot of plugins, and even some big plugins, don't work with this. So, um, you know, test. Uh, remove the version header. This is, you know, security by obscurity. Basically, you're just hiding it. 
This isn't as big, but I threw it in here because it's kind of expected. Um, but now, you know, these bots and stuff, and they hit your sites, they're not really, they're not going to look at your source and say, oh, this, this says 2.7, so I'll trust it. They're going to just try things and see what works. So if they know there's a particular vulnerability at 2.7, they're going to try that vulnerability. And if it works, they know you're running 2.7. Uh, but again, if you want to get it out of your header, this is how you can do it. Most themes have that line of code in there you can just delete. Um, WordPress also brings it back in the WP head function call. Um, if you want to remove it, you can just drop back your functions uh, PHP file in your theme, and it will uh, it will stop bringing that back. Um, if you're using premium themes, a lot of times they have a uh, option to uh, turn off the theme version. A lot of themes put the version that, that you're running in the header. Um, so again, you know you don't really want to give out too much information as you can. Um, this is just some, you know, something to think about. Uh, this is kind of an obvious one, stay current on updates. Uh, but, you know, when there's a new version of WordPress, uh, you know, install it. You know, if it's, uh, especially if it's an incremental update, a lot of times those fix bugs, uh, but they can also fix security vulnerabilities. But any, if you re uh, read the release notes on any release, at least you tell you if it's recommended uh, or not for security reasons. Um, and same for plugins. You know, new plugins are coming out all the time. The nice thing is the uh, plugin directory added the change log tab. So you can actually see kind of in a set format what's changed in that version. So if it's a new plugin and maybe it just adds a couple new features that you don't need, there's no rush to upgrade. But if it's a new plugin and it fixes a vulnerability, it should stay there. Um, so, you know, you know by seeing that, okay, there's a, this fixes a bug, I should look at upgrading so far. Um, you know, so keep your installations updated, keep your plugins updated. Uh, use secure passwords. This is kind of an obvious one. Um, everything you use, you should your password. Bad password, Brad rocks. Everybody know my name is Brad. Everybody knows our rocks, so it's very good to guess. Um, a good password is just gibberish, you know. And WordPress will tell you when you have a good one. So this is this is kind of a common sense one. Just use a secure password. A uh, good resource, goodpassword.com. I use. Go to the website, you click generate password, and it, you know it'll pop up some secure password that's that's not going to be guessable. Um, so quick and easy. Oh yeah, so you suck if you're not using a good password. I kind of missed that joke. <laughs> um, use secret keys. Uh, the secret keys are set in your WP config file. Um, basically, these just add an extra layer, um, which is called a hashing salt against your password. So it kind of encrypts your password against these randomly generated keys. Um, you'll see before, if you open up a brand new config file and a new installation, it's going to look just like the before there. It's going to tell you to kind of put those neat phrases in there. Um, in the comments, it has the link to the API right in the config file, so it's not something you remember, it's in the config file. Go to that URL and it's going to generate what, exactly what it looks like on after, but it'll be random every time you refresh the page. So you can just load up the page, copy the keys, overwrite the before and save. That's all you have to do. Um, now if you don't have this set, you can do this on a live site, and you definitely should do this. You want to set these. If you add these to a live site and you didn't have them previously, all it's going to do is invalidate all the cookies that have been set, and your users will have to log in again. That's it. So. Um, it's not going to cause any harm to set these. So if you don't have these, definitely um, go out there tonight or tomorrow and uh, get those in. Um, change the WordPress table prefix uh, on a new installation. Uh, again, this is in the WP config file. Um, you have the option of changing the table prefix. By default, it's WP underscore, um, but everybody knows that. So it's good to change that, make it something random, make it something unique. Go Colts, that's a good one, I recommend that. Um, so then all of your database tables will look like that. Go Colts underscore posts, go, go, go Colts underscore users. Um, so, you know, it's, it's, it's hard to guess. Now, obviously, if somebody gets into your database, you've already lost anyway, so that's not going to matter. But if someone's uh, trying to use SQL injection to hack your site and they're trying to guess your table names, um, this could prevent them from getting uh, one step further. So, something good to do. You can uh, force SSL if you want. So if you want to have HTTPS, um, you can force it on only the login, or you can fo force it on the, the entire admin site. Um, basically, this is just going to encrypt any data you're passing back and forth, just like if you're on an e-commerce site and passing your credit card. Um, it's going to use the same encryption. Obviously, you have that SSL set up and configured on your server. So if you, uh, a good way to test is just go to your website and type in HTTPS whatever.com, and if it loads, you have SSL, and if it doesn't, you don't. Um, but most shared hosting accounts, you know, you can easily add those for um, a small fee, a yearly fee. But it's a good idea. It can slow down the page loads a little bit, but at least it's encrypting everything. And again, these, these uh, just to point out, these lines you would add in your WP config file. Drop them in there, it's going to drop, it's going to add that S to the URL every time you visit the, an admin page. 
Uh, this is probably my favorite, HT Access Lockdown. Uh, basically, HT Access, a lot of us know that it kind of controls the, you know, pretty permanently, but it also can do a lot more. Um, in this instance, if you were to make a new HT Access file with this uh, particular code and add it to your WP admin directory, um, you can actually restrict access to the entire admin side of WordPress by your IP address. Um, so you can type in, you know, your home IP address, your work IP address, you can have multiple loud from lines. Um, and basically, if you go to that, if you go to WP admin to log in, you're not from that IP address, it won't even load the page. So it won't even, it won't even have a chance to try to, you know, break into your site because again, it won't even load. Um, so this only really works if you're the only person on your site. If you have open registration, a bunch of users, obviously you can't use this. Um, and remember to um, home ISPs, change password, or I, uh, change IPs, you know, usually every couple of weeks. Um, so if for some reason your IP changes and all of a sudden you're locked out, you know, don't worry, you can just go into FTP either update the IP address or delete the file, and you'll be able to get right back in. So this is a nice, quick, easy way to lock down your admin site. Uh, so real quick, we'll go through some security plugins. Uh, WP Security Scan, uh, created by my good buddy Michael Torbert. Um, basically this, when you turn it on, it shows you kind of this initial top level, what's good and what's bad about your security on your site. Um, you can see here it's telling me I'm using the WP underscore prefix, which you should change. Um, it's telling me admin user exists, so these are things we already discussed. Um, and then also we'll look at your folders your, uh, and tell you what the, the current permissions are and tell you what they should be. So you can see here, just as examples, like my plugins folder is currently 777, which it should not be. It's telling me to change it back to 755. So basically you want all those to be green. Um, you know, this is one that you don't necessarily need to leave on all the time. Um, you can turn it on once a week, check out your site, deactivate it. Um, you can leave it on if you want. The URL is there too. Uh, WordPress exploit scanner is another good one. This is created by Don, but this is WordPress again. Um, and this basically scans your uh, the actual source files and the data in your database. It looks pretty and it might be suspicious. Um, this one's a little more advanced because it'll be a lot of false positives. You can see in this example, um, Kismet popped up because it has an iframe, and we all know Kismet is a safe plugin. Um, so you got to kind of know code a little bit, or at least understand it, but this is good to turn on and run it. If anything just looks out of order, or maybe a certain file that it pulls out of plugins doesn't make sense, or it's not a plugin you installed, um, you know, it can kind of raise red flags. So turn it on, scan your site every once in a while, and see if anything kind of stands out. Again, this isn't one you need to leave on. Turn it on once a week, run a scan, deactivate it when you're done. Uh, this is another great one, WordPress File Monitor. This is one you would leave on. You turn this on your site, and basically what this does, if any source files in your entire installation are changed or modified in any way, it'll send you an email and tell you. So if, if a hacker bot were to get into your website and were to exploit footer.php or your theme, you would get an email within a few minutes telling you that it was updated. Right away, if you're not updating your site, you know something's wrong uh, because something changed. You can get in there and take a look at it. Yeah. Will that have protected the first example you shared? Yes, it would. Um, this is actually fairly new. This came out, uh, I want to say like last summer, um, but it's a great plugin. This is, again, this is one you would want to keep on all the time. Now, I also notice there's an exclude path. If you have like a caching plugin turned on or building files, exclude that path. You're going to get a lot of emails every time it's rebuilding those files. Uh, login lockdown is another good one. This one basically limits the number of times you can try to log in. If someone's sitting there trying, trying, trying to log in, you know, you might assume that they're a hacker trying to get some passwords. Um, so after, you know, however many attempts you set, it will basically lock them out um, for, you know, a short delay, which you can kind of configure there. So this is another nice one to turn on. Uh, here's some good WordPress security uh, resources. Um, I always tell people, if you're out there reading security tips about WordPress, just keep in mind the date on the articles, because WordPress is changing very quickly. So if you're reading an article, even from, you know, early last year, it could be out of date. So definitely keep, keep an open eye on the... Uh, particular days. But these, you know, I went through, these are all very good articles. Um, so if you kind of want to read up a little bit more on it. And this is just to throw out a little bit of a To one, okay. Uh, so there's my contact information. So if anybody wants to shoot me an email, I'm always in IRC in the WordPress rooms. Um, I like hanging out in there. I'm on Twitter, blog, everywhere else. So, you know, hit me up if you have any questions. Any other questions before we wrap up? Yeah. Uh, Actually, can I just use the mic because we're trying to capture it on video? Um, what about plugins that require you to set certain permissions on folders so that they can use them? Yeah, I mean, 
a lot of, any, any plugin that's going to require some kind of uh, uploader is going to require that. Um, that just a gallery is a perfect example. It creates a gallery folder in your content directory, um, and that's going to need the same write permissions as your uploads folder because you're uploading files into that. As long as it's a respective plugin, um, you know, one that's been downloaded a lot and a lot of people use it, you know, you can pretty much go off their instructions and they'll tell you what to do. Um, if it's something maybe you haven't heard of, it's not on WordPress.org, it's up on some third party website, you know, nobody else running it, you might use a little bit of option. Um, but, you know, again, it's just kind of common sense. Like, yeah, you know, you can jump in on like support forms and ask people for recommendations. Other questions? Yeah. Are your slides still online? Yeah, I'll push these up. I have. Um, I did. I did the same presentation in New York. That one's available. I'll go ahead and push this one up <coughs> after. Uh, now it's in one of the video book. So I'll push those. So, and I'll. Uh, I'll go ahead and push that up on Twitter. So you can just keep track of me, and I'll do a book a little bit later tonight. Yeah. Um, if you're following, thank you. If you're uh, following your uh, Google Analytics, would uh, Spambot show up in that? In other words, um, you can notice or something like any hack or you get spam in your comments or something like that. They, they could. It really depends on how they're coming to your site. I mean, if they're coming through like an HTTP request, it's going to show up as a normal hit to your site. Now, what it shows up from, whether it's an IP address or a domain, it's hard to say. Um, but if, if it's hitting you through that, now, if it's going through some other channels trying to hit your site, it may not show up. Uh, but it's, it's certainly something to keep up, you know, keep on. If there was like a huge spike in traffic from one particular website that you've never heard of and was suspicious, you know, that might be a red flag. Yeah? Can we go back to that deleting the admin user question? Um, because I, on an MU installation, I it's actually a little different. If you're the owner, if you're the owner of admin, I create the owner admin on an MU installation. I don't think you can delete that user. Um, I think you might be right. The because uh, uh, in MU, the admin there's basically two admins. There's an admin, and then there's a, a, a super app. Is it super admin? That's not right. There's a. Uh, network admin, I want to say super admin, that right. Whatever it's called. They don't, yeah, they don't and it's basically it. like the network wide admin. And um, I, we have come across that problem before where you're right, you, um, you can't get rid of it. So in that case, you really just have to lock it down. There's ways around it, but it's not as simple as just going into the UI and you know, deleting the user. You're right, it won't let you do that. That's a good point. Now that might go away when they merge. That's a good question. So, you know that. yeah. With that, would you be able to just go into the SQL database and like, you know, to a global private place and references to whatever the super admin's name is or something like that. You could. Is and, uh, that we, we did this once. I'm going to have to think up exactly how we did this. Because um, you're right, if you just went in and updated the admin user, that doesn't work in, in any. It'll update, but it also breaks. Um, yeah, basically. Um, and I think it's because it is that super admin's hook to it. I can't remember if you have to update that and update the super admin record as well. Have you used it or not? Um, I'll have to look into that, to be honest. Um, but I will look into it. And, uh, if I come across something, I'll go ahead and post it on my blog. So. Yeah. Do you have any insight as to how these uh, hacking bots target sites? Like, do they just randomly from a web and just come across people and Yeah, I mean, there's. Yeah, I mean, you know, obviously the more prominent your site is, the more likely it is to be targeted or to be looked at. Um, you know, so TechCrunch, for example, probably get hit all day, every day, by all sorts of different bots. Whereas my blog, nobody's hitting it because you know nobody really reads it. So, um, <laughs> you know, it's, it's 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 hard to say exactly, but um, you know, and again, it could be any type of blog, really. But they are like there could be a bot specific to just WordPress that's out there just looking for WordPress sites, grabbing links, going to those links, you know, digging through, making a collection of links that it knows are WordPress sites, and then it may go back to a later point and check them out. It's really hard to say because they're, you know, they're all different. Who knows how they all run? Um, it's kind of like trying to, you know, determine how Google works. You know, we, kind of, we have assumptions and good ideas based on things that have happened, um, but you know, you probably don't know an answer. You bailed. Um, yeah. So, any your guests, just apply me one guest per person. Um, if you hit the number, the first person hit the number right exactly wins. If for some reason nobody guesses it right. I'll take the closest one, um, and I'm going to cut it off at the end of lunch. So you have to lunch to, uh, to figure it out. So, um, and again, I'll just uh, I'll ping you on Twitter, and we can meet up somewhere here. But thanks, everybody. Thanks,